are dead to my foes. Who am I? I am in the east, forts and castles, towns and hamlets, rocks and boulders. What irony, what a shameful day. A slave I am now for bloodsuckers, yet I saved the Middle East from the Romans and the Crusaders. Who am I? Ask the nearest, ask the Middle East, villages and towns, plains and deserts. They were once all mine, when by war and knowledge I de defeated rivals, to become crowns over an empire, stretching to the borders of India. Who am I? I am the proud Kurt, the enemy's enemy, the friend of peace-loving ones. I am of noble race, not wild as they claim. My might ancestors were free people. Like them, I want to be free and that's why I fight. For the enemy won't live in peace and I don't want to be forever oppressed. To Our next friend is from Workers 230, Tom Murray. Hi. Um, my friend and comrade Aileen uh, was due to speak this evening, but uh, she's a little unwell, so she sends her apologies. Um, we at the Worker Solidarity Movement last April helped organize a delegation uh, from Rojava to come over and speak at the Dublin Anarchist Book Fair. Uh, it included representatives from the Kurdish Women's Congress uh, like Aisha Gokhan and Elif Burke, as well as academics like Erjana Boyga, uh, who all work and struggle um, in Rojava uh, for women's rights, for direct democracy, um, and for ecological sustainability. And these are all things uh, that drive us here as well, that we're inspired by. Uh, so we're here today to offer not just our solidarity, uh, but to say how much we respect and appreciate the struggle for freedom that is going on in Rojava at the moment. Um, and to say that in the worker solidarity movement and in all the people gathered here, the people of Rojava, um, and all those involved in that struggle have firm friends and allies um, and we'll keep the struggle going here on their behalf as well. So, thank you very much. From Sinn Féin, Kathleen function with us. Um, thanks everyone. Firstly, I'd just like to thank the, the organisers for the opportunity to speak at this um, solidarity rally and speak in support of Rojava. Um, as a woman particularly, and as someone who has always fought for women's rights and for equality in relation to women, and I know that's one of them the, at the heart of Rojava, so I'm really delighted to, to have the chance to address this. The Turkish government fears the progressive, popular, secular and democratic foundations of Rojava. Turkey naively believes that its tanks and jets can destroy Rojava's progressive and non-sectarian politics, but they are wrong. Rojava has become a light, a beacon of hope for all the progressive people of the world against inequality, despotic regimes and systems of hierarchy and patriarchy. I think this is really relevant today when we see the injustices faced all around the world and that people really it's really important for people to come here together not only in support and to show solidarity but to highlight exactly what's going on in the world because you won't see um, the real story on RT or any of the mainstream media so it's up to people here to go out and spread the word not just from a solidarity point of view but from an education point of view to let people know what's happening. Turkey fears its alternative model of governance and we've gathered here we all on the other hand have gathered here to support that alternative model of governance. It's important that we do gather not only to support Rojava but to highlight to the rest of the world exactly what is happening. I'm just going to finish on this. Another unacceptable product of the Turkish government's hostile position towards the Kurds in Turkey and Syria is the walls it is constructing beside Kurban and other places at the border with Rojava clearly trying to separate Kurds, sow division and ultimately leave no escape route if towns and cities are overrun. So today we are calling on the Turkish military to immediately leave Rojava, stop its war against the Kurds in Syria and Turkey, establish cooperation and peace with them on either side of the border, Gurmagat. Thanks. State Union representative Meg Soberain.
Thanks. Um, I'm here today as the chair of the Irish Congress of Trade Unions Global Solidarity and just like to say that we welcome the opportunity to speak here and to express the trade union movement's support for the Kurdish people. Um, we feel that the, the European Union has an utterly cynical policy of allowing Erdogan to massacre Kurds and support ISIS. And in return, this is in return for stopping refugees from getting into Europe. So there's much behind, uh, behind this plot. The, and the Irish and British governments should be making every effort to arrive at a negotiated solution to the problems in the Middle East. And Kurdish involvement in this is absolutely paramount because they represent a viable and secular alternative for the region as a whole. And just to say that uh, in, in the latest Turkish repression, there have been hundreds of trade unions who have been jailed or have been ex exiled. And, you know, it's a trade union uh, movement concern about these people. It's a human rights concern. So we stand in solidarity with the people of Kurdistan and with the people in Turkey who are being imprisoned. Is Madeline Johnson from Socialist Workers Party. Uh, thank you so much for inviting me uh, to speak here to you today. On behalf of the Socialist Workers' Party, I want to state our total opposition to the current Turkish ground and air assault on northern Syria. In particular, we note and condemn the hypocritical way in which the Turkish government masks and tries to legitimize its attacks on the Kurdish people by linking them to a claimed offensive against ISIS. This is despite the fact that heroic Kurdish fighters have been the most effective resistance to ISIS in the area. We also condemn in particular the Turkish air assaults which inevitably have claimed many civilian lives and likewise the USA's clear complicity in these attacks. We declare our solidarity with the Kurdish people of northern Syria in their struggle for self-determination as part of the age-old struggle for liberation of the Kurdish people as a whole. We stand unequivocally for free, independent and united Kurdistan. We demand the end of all hostilities by the Turkish government against the PKK and all other Kurdish movements and the release of all Kurdish political prisoners beginning with Abdullah Öcalan. Tragically, the entire region, first and foremost Syria, but also the whole of Anatolia and the Middle East, has been turned into a disaster area of conflict, war, destruction, dictatorship, sectarian strife and humanitarian catastrophe. The responsibility for this cat catastrophe lies first and foremost with the forces of imperialism and above all US imperialism that together with their sub-imperial collaborators have ravaged the entire region in pursuit of oil profits and other capitalist interests and to this end have constantly pursued policies of divide and rule. We in the Socialist Workers Party oppose and condemn all Western or Russian military intervention in Syria or anywhere else in the region. We condemn the Zionist occupation of Palestine. We stand in solidarity with and place our faith exclusively in the masses of ordinary people, Kurdish, Turkish and Arab, to win their own liberation from imperialism and its local allies and live together in peace on the basis of democracy, equality, freedom and mutual respect for the rights of self-determination. We also condemn the Irish government in, uh, in allowing the US uh, army to use Shannon Airport uh, as a stopover for their imperialist uh, attacks in the Middle East. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks a lot and really fair play to the organizers for organizing this. Um, the first thing to say is to express our solidarity with the fighters of the YPG, with the Kurdish people in Rojava, because I think for a lot of people, progressive people, looking at the nightmare that is the Middle East, it's provided a very bright light in what has been a very dark context of sectarianism, of misery, of imperialism, and of reaction. And it's precisely because of it being so bright a light 
that Turkey and now US imperialism would like to snuff it out, would like to extinguish it. I think it's really important to draw attention to the hypocrisy of Western imperialism, uh, where you know the US it's happy to temporarily ally with different forces for its own interests, but they'll only use people for their own gain. At the end of it, they always throw people aside and they give the green light on this occasion for Erdogan for the attack of the Turkish state on the Kurdish people to attempt to snuff out uh, Rojava. Also, being in Europe, I think we have to draw particular attention to the hypocrisy of the European Union because as part of the deal to turn Turkey into an open-air prison camp for refugees attempting to come into Europe, it's not just that the Turkish state get 6 billion euros of European public money, but the precondition for that to happen is that Turkey has to be deemed to not to be a human rights abuser. It has to be deemed to be a, a safe third country where people aren't in danger and therefore they have no right to refugee status and they can be simply interned there indefinitely in Turkey. So the European Union is also guilty of turning a complete blind eye to the actions of Erdogan to the actions of the regime internally within Turkey but also externally uh, uh, you know attacking Kurds both within the formal Kur Turkish borders and attacking Kurds in uh, Rojava. The final point is obviously to uh, to go return to that point about the the fact that it, it's I think what you see in Rojava it's the most advanced example of how things could be different of how a struggle of ordinary people on a non-sectarian basis can be built, a cross-community basis can be built, a united struggle can be built, and how a very different Middle East can emerge. A Middle East that kicks out the dictators, a Middle East that kicks out all the different imperialisms that are present and that are meddling, a Middle East that uses the resources that exist on a massive scale to benefit the lives of ordinary people, and a Middle East that defends different people's democratic rights and different people's national rights, including their right to self-determination. Thank you very much. Who am I? I shall free my land from tyrants, from the corrupt Shah and Mullahs, from the Turkish juntas. So we may live free like other nations. So my gardens and meadows are mine again. So I can join the struggle for the good of mankind. Our next speaker is from Socialist Party, Paul Murphy. The intervention in Syria is not to attack ISIS, but to destroy the gains made by the Kurds and other groups in order to further destabilize Syria. On 24th August 2016, the Turkish state occupied the city of Jarablus, North Syria, under the pretense of fighting ISIS. The timing of the occupation of Jarablus, which sits on the Turkish-Syrian border, is important. The move followed the liberation of an ISIS stronghold Minbij by the Syrian Democratic Forces and the Minbij Military Council on 13 August 2016. The Turkish army and its alliance forces captured Jarablus with no fight, indicating a previous agreement. There was no battle during the occupation of Jarablus, and ISIS fighters simply changed their uniforms to al Nusra ones. This means ISIS is still operating in the area under different names. The Turkish state and its partners have now started an intense offensive against the Syrian Democratic Forces, the Minbij Military Council, and Kurdish people and other civilians in the areas, under the cover story that the Kurdish Defense Forces are still in Minbij. This is something officially denied by the YPG headquarters, who say that they left the area shortly after the liberation of Minbij. Some local sources have reported the use of chemical weapons by the Turkish military and affiliated groups against the civilians in some villages at Amarna, Dendaye, in order to take them from the Syrian Democratic Forces. The occupation by the Turkish state that is occurring before the eyes of the whole world is violation of the international law. The states that approve and stay silent to this occupation, namely EU and the US, ISIS attacks in Europe have been aided by and um, carried out through the border controlled by Turkey. And therefore, the occupation leaves the West and humanity vulnerable to further ISIS attacks. 
Whereas the Syrian Democratic Forces, made up of Kurds, Arabs, Assyrians, Armenians, and other groups were on the brink of defeating and shutting off the borders on ISIS. The Turkish occupation has prevented the defeat, the defeat of ISIS. The Turkish state is operating in partnership with the Al-Qaeda affiliated Jabhat Fatah al sham previously known as Al-Nusra and ISIS. Jarablus has been seized through an agreement between them. We believe that the Turkish state and these terrorist groups will spread their attacks across the region to prevent further to prevent further war and chaos to save the lives of thousands of civilians and more refugees to its ascension. Its ascension. We call we call all the democratic public opinion and all international institutions to raise their voices against the dirty games of Turkey and their occupation. We call upon the EU and US to seize all their support for the action of the Turkish state to stand together against the Turkish state intervention and war. Stop the Turkish occupation and support the democratic federation in Syria. Thank you.